Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. Uh, this is uh, Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering IIT Kharagpur. We are at the beginning of the module 6 or the 6th week. In sequence, the lecture number is 28. Uh, we have covered uh, in last week lectures, uh, uh, last module lectures, uh, different way the stress. And in this week, we will cover strain as well as we will solve a few problems to give you some insight about the analysis. So, we will discuss more on strain. Uh, this is this is very important uh, lecture. The lecture may be may outcome to a very small uh, lecture, but it is very important. Uh, I would suggest uh, if you are in the process of uh, learning or in advanced studies better you better you remember this particular lecture it will help you definitely it will help you with uh, that note uh, let us move forward and as we move forward the first uh, slide comes with the recapitulation it is always i feel to better to recapitulate that helps to memorize things gives us the reminder what you have learned all already and uh, as a whole uh, at the end of the course you will see if you look at this and attend this uh, few seconds uh, you will find that uh, you can visualize the total course um, very well and that helps that really helps uh, not a big deal but really helps i have learned this from a very renowned professor i am lucky to to learn things from him Anyway, uh, so we have learned uh, history of uh, aircraft or aviation to some extent and we have learned uh, how uh, physicist has developed the subject of mechanics, solid mechanics and from there how the structural analysis has come up. Uh, in mathematical approach was the first approach that we have already started, uh, we have started in last week as well as in the last to last week while we have we, we discussed about complementary strain energy, strain energy and total potential energy, everything we, we started and those are the basic things uh, uh, where from the total subject has evolved to, to, to the date what we have uh, learned. Various types of external load uh, is the next topic we have covered for experienced by aircraft and uh, how those loads vary in different condition while it is in runway or is it is airborne or maybe during landing. And uh, we have also learned the flight envelope uh, load factors. We have we have also learned, uh, learned uh, uh, shear stress bending moments uh, experienced by an aircraft. We have learned uh, Three, three dimensional structures like trusses and in the last week uh, that is 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 uh, just in the last week what we have learned is that about stress stress how the stresses are we have come across uh, different types of stresses components of stresses for isotropic cases we have come across uh, six components finally considering the complementary shear stresses uh, to be equal. Initially, it was nine components, and then uh, we have come across of different uh, orientations, uh, transformations from transformation. We have uh, seen that we can find a coordinate system or a set of uh, set of stress, uh, sigma one, sigma two, sigma three, which are normal uh, stresses, where uh, known as principal stresses where in those particular planes where those are acting there is no shear stress 
and from there we have come across about shear stress also at any plane and we have come across uh, good examples like uh, octahedral stress and also we have come across uh, about the uh, stress ellipsoid. So, those things uh, are you have learned, we have learned in the last week. With that note, we will move forward to the definition of strain. Uh, this week, we will be covering mainly the strain. Uh, this is what uh, already we have seen. So, what we are going to do is uh, the strain, introduction to strain we will be doing uh, and I will try to introduce the strain with as much detail as possible in different books, it has been introduced in different way. Uh, I will try to follow a general approach um, with the concept of vectors and tensors. Let us see um, how do we understand that. Okay. So, in this it is again uh, some mistake uh, with the interpretation of slide. These are all vectors. So, with that note, uh, let us start uh, our discussion. This figure is a really interesting figure. What we are trying to see is that a vector is there as r, the tip of that vector is p and uh, an incremental length of that p vector is q which is given by dr and we see that we are considering that that amplitude dr is equals to ds. Now, uh, we also define dr star, uh, please consider that thing for misrepresentation in digital media. Similarly, we are considering that after deformation, deformation means it is under stress from external system and because of the stress that r vector has come here and uh, that p has changed position to p and q has p star and the q has changed position to q star. And please look at that, there is twisting and all other possible change of lengths uh, as far as possible is represented in this figure. The overall this figure is changed, it is twisted, it is length is increased, all those things, all possible ways we have put here. And from general consideration, since you are introduced with the components of stresses, we can easily imagine that that many components of strains are also there. And uh, we define that this r vector as the r p as x p i, uh, x p j, x p k or x 1, x 2, x 3 as i j k using the unit vector. Now, as it is said there, I as mentioned that delta r is, a, is an increment from here and that is the point q x plus d x i is the are the two points to a distance of d r. Apart and that d r apart these two points are changing to these two points d r changes to d r star and because of that the displacement involved is here is u and here is u plus delta u. Let us try to see what happens. This is a general discussion on the direction cosines involved and we will be using the direction cosines that is the reason direction cosines of p q are lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3. Sometimes it is given by L m n, sometimes uh, if it is unit n 1 n 2 n 3 all those way it is given. 
and thus the reason it is given as dr is ds the x y z as it is uh, can be said x 1 x 2 x x 1 x 2 x 3 here and similar way we define those in a general way we define this way d x i is equals to lambda d s. After deformation the displacement of p from p to p star this we have said and u is i u y where u are 1 again it is some similar terms are introduced here though we will be using mostly the tensorial way. But uh, these terms are introduced these, this or these are introduced uh, to give you the correlation with the already experienced or learned system. We are uh, bringing back all those things again and again. So, in that way 1, 2, 3 represents u, v and w are known as engineering notations and displacement of q is as we mentioned u plus u star is equals to u plus delta u. So, with this understanding of the system and positions and vectors uh, direction cosines, we move forward to the next slide. All vectors are now unarless, so we need to erase those vectors, okay, vectors are erased. Okay. Now, what we have is uh, that this is uh, the increment u star. Yes, it has gone back, that is the problem. Okay. So, u star as we have uh, seen that is getting increment. Uh, with respect to the coordinate system or that is the way this is the gradient in that particular direction of x 1 and that is why the d x change is given as del u 1 by del x 1, del u 2 by del x 2 by d x 2 in the y direction, x direction, y direction and z direction. In 3 orthogonal direction we are get giving the increment and that uh, is consisting of the d u portion and then d u gets redefined in this term this way as uh, the separate increments of that particular uh, direction or three orthogonal Cartesian directions. And accordingly what we have is that u star i minus u i is equals to this. So, uh, with this uh, what we have which represents the relative displacement between the two neighboring point p and q. A small line element d r before deformation uh, deformed to d r star this we are repeating. Then the magnitude has changed from d s to d s star. And from the usual definition of strain, uh, this is has come close, please excuse me. Uh, if we define epsilon is equals to change of length by original length, that gives us d s star minus d s divided by d s. And a simple algebraic plus 1 if we do in both sides we get this relation which gives that that d s star or the changed length this length is equals to 1 plus epsilon multiplied by the d s the original length. Now, d s star amplitude if we are talking about uh, is nothing but the dot product of these two p q and d r star and dr star. So, what we can do is uh, let us see how can we define that p q. So,
So, this is star component, this is star component that is the reason we will come there. Okay. So, p q star what we have found is that r q uh, a vector I have not drawn from here to here and a vector r p star that is from here to here that is the difference will give me that p star q star vector. So, that is written here and it is expanded as r p plus d r and u plus delta u and uh, this is the r q what we see and this is the r p what we see and if this the common terms cancels out and we have that this is equals to d r minus d u and uh, actually while we substitute the values of this uh, what we have is that uh, this is equals to dot product of these two or in the other way if we see that this is this is equals to p star q star dot p star q star dot. So, this we have as this expression and those expressions are substituted here and in the previous uh, slide what we have already found out that is put here and uh, what we see is uh, that uh, I have skipped some steps in this because uh, that is uh, is is a completely tensorial uh, notation of uh, multiplying two incremental vectors. We need to already you see some are introduced Kronecker delta because of the dot product is already in introduced and because of the introduction of that dummy variable k l all these things there is a complicated uh, tensorial calculus is uh, involved that is the reason uh, I have jumped those few steps and uh, why if we see uh, we get uh, if we carry out this we get these equations and uh, the equation becomes that del x d x i multiplied by d x i or square of it we generally do not write as square in that sense. So, the other components becomes del u, del u i del x j del u j del x i del u k del x i del u k del x j these two are repeated. So, if these two are repeated what happens I will have summation over that, but before that uh, let us see how does this get uh, modified for with respect to the left hand side. So, now d s can easily be divided uh, on the right hand side and we can have that this is equals to lambda i to lambda i and this is also lambda i and lambda j this is x i and x j that is the reason i j and this is x i and multiplication of this or something like cos square theta plus cos square alpha plus uh, cos square uh, beta plus cos square gamma is equals to 1. So, following that for three dimensional case we have direction questions summation of those equals to 0 this and this cancels out the remaining term is twice e plus epsilon to twice epsilon plus epsilon square is equals to this term. So, finally, what we see is that uh, we considered a vector r and that vector is changed position to here as the final r vector with p star and associated increment of that particular vector d r is also changed to d r star and uh, that thing we, we, we have found out that uh, what is the strain uh, this is the strain from here d s star square we have found out and d s star square is nothing but this p q dot product of these two and those two vectors we have found out dot product using the tensor calculus and we come across some relation with respect to the 
strain and displacement variables. Displacement variables involving u i, u j and u k sorry u i j where i j varying from 1 to 3. So, with that note uh, we move forward to the next slide. Yes, this is what we have seen in our last slide, it is written in a very clean way. Now, epsilon square may be neglected as a very small value, please uh, consider this epsilon and this epsilon as same, this, these are two font problem only. So, uh, if this is neglected because very small terms uh, uh, if made square that contributes a very, very small way that is the reason that is neglected. And if we express that epsilon is equals to epsilon i j lambda i lambda j, what we can see that this epsilon i j is equals to half of u i u u i comma j that means the derivative of u i with respect to j, derivative of u j with respect to i and derivative of u k with respect to i multiplied by this and summation. To understand this tensorial notation one example is carried out in this example i and j is considered as 1 1. So, what happens half remains outside as half this is 1 comma 1 that means del u 1 del u del i or del x i uh, this is uh, said that del u again same quantity because both are same and there here we have summation of those these are since it is 1 1 all are coming as square, uh, but uh, it is not always the same way we can elaborate it we can experience it. So, I would suggest you may consider that as a homework. If we elaborate this uh, as a tensorial notation putting i and j uh, 1, 2, 3 and k is definitely sum over, over i j and uh, since it is repeated we need to consider those uh, as sum of those two terms. Let u 1 equals to u, u 2 equals to v and u 3 equals to w, then this, this same expression becomes this expression. So, it is in index notation 1, 2, 3, it is in Cartesian notation or x, y, z notation u v w. <coughs> u v w are the displacement fields and derivatives are taken with respect to x and f x x is defined this way. Uh, now, here it is better to introduce that uh, probably you were introduced with the term that f x x is equal to del u del x where from this term comes. Uh, this is uh, what we get uh, because of consideration of that particular generic case of strain derivation. We considered uh, any type of movement and uh, we have uh, in that way we have considered uh, some higher order terms or nonlinear terms. So, this part of strain is generally known as the nonlinear strain and this is the known as the linear strain. So, in a general way uh, if we write it down what it looks like let, let us say uh, if it is uh, some shear strain to be denoted. So, like that f x x considering 1 2 also you can find out and as I said it is does not is, is a square it is sometimes this way written and in general uh, psi x y is something like half of del u del y plus del v del x that is what we are familiar with, but these terms uh, are coming here as the nonlinear terms. For linear theory we generally do not consider those terms and it becomes something like psi x x equals to del u del x y y 
is del v del y is as z del w del del z and x y is equals to half of del u del y plus del v del x and similarly we can write the other strain components also. <coughs> where uh, there is a good relation between these two uh, epsa and it is known as uh, gamma 1 2 is known as the engineering strain and uh, epsa 1 2 is known as tensor component of strain. So, uh, please keep it in mind generally these two convention is followed uh, either epsilon or gamma is used and with this notation uh, we will again Yes, please. Stop, please. Recording. It is multiplication. Yes. to stop. Kothe have a slide tag on double hache. Last uh, slide. What I have written. Yes. Here it is written. Uh, square is considered. Uh, there it is written. Yes. Good. Good. Pointed out. Good. Pointing out. So, better to repeat this slide. Uh, a, a slide ta re recording korte have act a mistake. Ache. Hello, hmm. a slide ta re recording korte have a can act a mistake. Ache. Uh, a slide number. 9 is 9 ta actually ei expression ta bhul lekha hoye geche ha ami expression ta thik kore debo tahole hi hobe ar kono kichu nei ami ekhoni ekhoni ami ekhoni ar oi expression notun kore correct kore anbo na ami ekhanei pen diye correct kore chhede debo ha karon o korar oto shomoy nei enei Play plus gulo multiplication hobe plus gulo multiplication kore chhede debo acha ha apni start kore din ek minute ek minute ami pore slide ekta i slide ache seta dekhe nei bhul ache kina na bhul nei seta te thik ache ha amra shuru kori amra ekhan theke shuru kori ar 2 3 minute hobe diye shesh kore debo so uh, with the generic derivation of uh, strain we have uh, already seen the epsilon xx of <coughs> considering from the index or tensorial notation to the cartesian notation how does it changes to epsilon xx in case of epsilon y xy or the shear strain uh, similar way we can uh, derive uh, from the index notation what is the expression comes it comes as half of del u del y plus del v del x and this is uh, not uh, plus uh, please note that it is a typographical mistake this is multiplication this is also multiplication and this is also multiplication do not think that it is deleted uh, these plus signs have come by mistake, but actually if you observe the previous expression you can is also easily get, but uh, for correction purpose it has been corrected here. And uh, what we do we move forward uh, considering this particular portion or the non-linear portion as it is said uh, to, to be discarded for linear theory and most of the derivations most of the work whatever we do. We, uh, we follow the linear theory and probably our world is running following the linear theory. Whatever engineering design in general we do, we consider linear theories. Non-linear theories are still in research state. Uh, implementation probably is there in some cases, but it is not uh, may be very high precision strain wherever it is required or the material which is uh, which shows uh, too much deformations along with with non-linearity in its uh, deflection in those cases we need to consider, but uh, those are rare cases we generally do not need to consider. Uh, one very specific example may be the inflatable structure people are using, but anyway those things uh, are very very high topic uh, of discussion uh, better not to bring here at this stage. 
So, anyway what we see is that with linear theory it reduces to very easy expressions if psi x x is del u del x, if psi y y del v del y, if psi z z del w del z and if psi x y is equals to half of del u del y plus del v del x. Similarly, the y z you can do and z x also you can do is corresponding u v and w or all these variables will change and corresponding one more uh, notation is generally followed that is half of gamma 1 2, where gamma 1 2 is known as the engineering strength and epsa 1 2 is known as the tensor component of strength. So, we move forward. So, uh, we come across to the last slide it is better to remember this slide. This slide is very, very useful wherever, whatever you do. Uh, you may <coughs> you may like to remember, you may like to remember uh, along with the nonlinear terms or you may uh, like to remember without the nonlinear terms, uh, but it is better to remember this. If you remember all uh, this up to this, it there is not a big deal to remember the remaining portion. So, this is what uh, the strain is defined including the nonlinear portion and it is only with the linear terms. So, with that note, uh, let us conclude uh, today's lecture. Reference slides uh, are same and uh, we come back to the what we have learned slide uh, in that learned slide we have learned uh, linear and non-linear strain derivation uh, with respect to the displacement strain displacement relation uh, strain displacement relation is learned. Now, we will go further with different uh, compatibility equation of strain and we will solve uh, problems in our future uh, lecture. So, with that uh, I thank you for uh, attending this class, this lecture we will meet again in the next lecture uh, to start or to talk more about strain and problems. Thank you. <coughs>